Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are once again dealing with the repeats redux category of tutorials. We're looking at repeat endings today. In other words, first and second repeats and all that kind of stuff. Um, this does get a little complex in Finale, so uh, that's why there's a, a bunch of videos on this. Uh, so bear with me as we get going on this. But um, I kind of gave you a, a primer for this in the first video. So just to kind of review, the really simple way to create first and second endings in Finale is really with the repeat tool here. Uh, just right click to get the contextual mending menu and you'll get the uh, create first and second ending option here and really that's you know the, the down and dirty way to do this it's all set up for you it will work exactly like you think it should and uh, you know that's pretty much it again the uh, first ending will go underneath the bar that's selected so if you select two of them and do for actually and also i should, should point out that we can get that option here in the repeat menu so create first and second ending and you'll see that it will uh, add your first and second ending, or the first ending will go under the selected bars. Um, we can also do this directly from the selection tool. Again, right click, find the repeat section here, first and second ending. All right, now there is one little thing about this that I kind of hate uh, in, in how Finale handles this. If you select more than two measures in Finale, so I've got three measures selected here, and I choose that create first and second ending, Finale does something horrible here, and they've never fixed this. It's it's sort of a, this is not the, the appropriate way to do this. A any uh, sheet music that you look at will have these lines connected right there. And um, it's, I, I don't have a great explanation for it other than I, I think that Finale is handling this uh, situation one bar at a time, and it doesn't really have a, a, a way of dealing with this middle bar. So we get this uh, first ending with this gap in it, which is, you know, it's notationally, it's incorrect, in my opinion. And Finale has never fixed that. And it, it's sort of an annoyance. And I'm going to show you sort of the workaround for this uh, in one of the later videos in this uh, repeat endings uh, series, or sub series of the repeats redux series. <laughs> there you go. Um, but I'll deal with that at a later time. But just know that that's uh, a little bit of a limitation to uh, these repeat endings. So other than doing that the simple way with the create first and second ending, uh, let's start looking at a few other uh, complex things that we can do with this. And right below that option, we have the create ending option. And this create ending uh, option will pull up this create ending definition. And uh, this is sort of where the magic happens with these endings, uh, particularly when you're creating them. Uh, and as you, as you can see, there's a few options here. We have the uh, ending numbers, um, uh, and we can you know put numbers here like one comma two comma three, and that will make that ending a first, second, and third ending. We could also do one dash three, as you can see, sort of in the text here. Um, and that will do the same thing. However, uh, if you put 1-3, Finale is still going to list it as 1, 2, 3. Uh, this is just sort of a shortcut for this little uh, window here. Uh, in fact, if I do that, you'll see that it will list it out 1, 2, 3. A um, couple other things here. You can have whatever alternate text in this ending that you want, but be aware that whatever's in this top box is sort of how Finale is going to handle the repeats on with playback. So if you wanted to do one, two, four, you could write literally anything in here, just whatever, and you'll see that it will put that whatever text uh, where the numbers would normally go. So just something to be aware of. You have some flexibility in terms of uh, making that look the way that you want it to. This would actually be a way to, um, you could do one, two, uh, three here. And actually you could do something like one dash three here, and that would give you that type of uh, look in the thing. So again, there's some flexibility there. And uh, let's look at some of these other options. So we have the targets, and this is similar to what I was talking about in the first video with the targets. Now, with the endings, uh, we have a couple extra options here. We have uh, next ending and never skip ending. And, um, uh, you know, what these are is, you know, the next ending... Let's say, well, this is sort of how it's set up. That's probably why it's the first one ending number here. The way that this works for uh, these endings in Finale is that, in the playback anyway, is that the, the music will go along, following my cursor here, it will go along, go along, get to the bar line, 
and this bar line or the repeat bar line and the repeat bar line will make it go back to the beginning and it will go 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 and then when it gets to the bar line here between bar four and five that's when the action of that repeat ending takes place so uh, after the first uh, time through, it will skip to the next ending, which would be bar six. Now, interestingly, you don't even have to have an ending in bar six. It will work anyway, and you can have any type of ending that you want in bar six. It will still skip to the ending. And the way that the next ending target works is that um, whatever numbers don't exist in the ending numbers up here is when it will go to the next ending. So if I have something like uh, one two um, so it will take the ending now I guess the ending can be considered bar five in this case so it will play the endings the first and second time through the third time through since it's not listed in this list here it will target to the next ending so we can do some complex things here where if you do uh, you know a complicated thing where we have another ending we can do ending numbers one and three and then on the second pass, it will skip that, skip over that. And then when it goes back on the third time, it will play that ending. And then when it gets to the fourth time, it will skip it. So again, the next ending is the, the target next ending is really that action is taking place on whatever number does not exist in the ending numbers. That's how that works. Now we do have other options in the target uh, uh, pull down menu here, including measure numbers forward, backwards. And, um, you know, as I mentioned in the first video, th some of these things have, have more functionality for, s for text repeats. Um, th I, there's no reason you would ever use a measured number for a ending, I don't think. Um, same with forward. Like, you could, s you know, you could use forward instead of uh, the next ending, and it would basically do the same thing by skipping one measure. You get to the end of bar four, and it skips over to bar six by going forward one measure. So... I mean, that's a possibility too, but it's sort of redundant with the next ending. Uh, backwards doesn't really have any meaning. <laughs> In fact, it's filling out as negative one. So negative one backwards would be one forward, I guess. Um, so again, this backward doesn't really have a meaning for endings. And then there's also uh, never skip ending. Um, now, I'm not sure of the you know, the usefulness of this, but um, uh, again, it would never skip the ending. So you could end up with some sort of um, looping effect uh, if you have this selected. All right, but for endings, really, <laughs> the most viable option here is next ending, even though they give you all these other options. So I want to kind of look at what is actually going on with this first ending specifically. Um, <laughs> you can see that there's a lot of handles here, which we're going to talk about in the next video because all of these handles um, are adjustment points that you can make to it. And it's it's really kind of confusing. Like, why is there so many handles? Or why is there two over here? Um, you know, just it doesn't make a lot of sense until you understand what exactly is happening. So when Finale creates this first ending like this, and there's a repeat uh, uh, bar line here, and the brackets and everything, there's actually two different things right here. And if we go into the repeat selection tool again, just select the measure and press return, you'll see that there's two things in the graphic repeat section, back ending and ending, okay? So uh, both of these things sort of have their own functionality. Um, and if I were to create just a back ending here, I'm gonna select that, um, always jump, that's fine. Um, what you're gonna see is the backwards repeat bar with this little graphic above it with the, uh, the, um, just the right hand hook, but not the left hand hook and not the number, right? This is the, the one element of this whole situation here. Um, the other element is, if I go back here, um, the uh, ending, which is the thing that we sort of started with uh, uh, earlier. We now we have the ending number and we have the option to create that backward repeat bar. Um, if I unselect that, then all I'm doing is creating sort of a second ending, right? And eff effectively what Finale is doing, which is, it, it's really d weird that it does this. This first ending is really a combination of these two elements. And there's sort of, I guess, an important reason why Finale considers this, because both of these things have different actions. This uh, repeat, uh, or this back ending here with the repeat bar line, if I double click that to get the uh, assignment, 
This looks exactly like the, uh, the backwards repeat bar assignment for a normal backwards repeat. The only difference is that now we have these options available in the bottom section to show on. That has to do with the bracket and everything, and the allow individual edits, again, having to do with the brackets. Otherwise, this top section is exactly the same as a normal uh, backwards repeat bar, right? And if you think about it, this backwards repeat bar has its own set of actions, and the repeat action and the target, right? Including the nearest forward repeat, which is what you want in this situation. The forward ending is what gives us these uh, other actionable things, including when to play that bar, basically, and when to skip it, right? So again, if it's not listed in the ending numbers, that's when it's going to go to the target, which is the next ending. Right, so when you look at the situation of this first ending here, basically there's two actions going on. There's an action for the backwards repeat bar, which is sending you back to the uh, closest forward repeat bar, or if there isn't one, it goes back to the beginning of the piece. And then the action for the ending itself, um, right there. And if you think about it, if you think about the way the finale goes along playing, it gets to this ending. It says, okay, this is the first ending, so we can play this bar. That's fine. Then it gets to the backwards repeat bar. It hits this, and it says, okay, what's what do I do? The action is go back to the beginning. It goes back to the beginning and goes along through bar four. Then it hits bar five, and now the action for this repeat ending says, well, this is not the first time through, so we need to skip, right? So it, that's sort of why there's uh, two different elements going on here. It has to do with the actions. The, uh, you know, the unfortunate side effect of that is that w with all of these brackets and all these handles and everything, uh, it does make it very uh, complicated to make adjustments to all of these things, uh, which is why <laughs> adjusting these things is its own video, which I'm about to get to uh, in the next video. But that's sort of what's happening, and that's why there's sort of two combined things uh, in this first ending. Now, when you have, let me just get rid of some of this stuff here. When you have a second ending sort of uh, after the, uh, the first ending with the uh, backwards repeat bar, I'm going to create an ending here. Uh, and also nicely, by the way, it, it will figure out sort of automatically what this ending number should be based on the context. I'm not 100% sure how Finale calculates that, but uh, it's helpful that uh, you don't have to fill in two every time if you're doing something like this. Um, now, in this case, I'm not going to create a backwards repeat because I don't want a, um, a, a double uh, ending situation quite yet. But I've got my ending number. I'm creating that, and you'll see the second ending. Now, uh, just a FYI, this second ending, although there is a sort of action that can take place on this ending, right? Target, next ending, uh, second ending. Uh, because you, you'll never really get to the... Um, the ending again, right? You're not going back and then getting to it so it can skip again, right? There's no other ending. It doesn't really matter what the target situation is here. You can put anything you want in here. It, it's not going to matter because you're, you know, you're going to play through this the second time. Um, all is good. It doesn't really have any function. It's it's almost graphical in that sense. So I started to allude to this, but it is possible to uh, create. Um, multiple endings in a row. So I'm going to set that up for you right now. Um, so here I'm going to put a uh, create ending. What I'm going to do is call this one and three, right? So it's only going to play this bar the first and third time through, right? It's going to be next ending, and I'm going to create a backwards repeat bar. And I'm going to get that text one, three. Now here, I'm going to do the same exact thing I'm going to create another ending with another create backwards repeat bar, but this time I'm going to call it two and four, right? Two comma four. And you'll see that uh, now I have two endings in a row. And then here I'm going to create another ending without the backwards repeat bar. And uh, well, finale got this one wrong. This actually should be five. So it's close. Uh, not quite calculated correctly, but we're, we're pretty much there. Um, so now we can have a situation like this where we have the, uh, you know, a com more complicated ending situation. We have uh, endings one and three, two and four, and then five. And Finale will play this back. Now, if you think about um, how Finale is going to route this, you know, it's going to play along. This is the first ending, so it's okay to play this bar. This, These repeats, by the way, these repeat bar lines, again, are set to always jump, right? And it's totally fine that this is always jump because it's only going to get to this repeat bar 
uh, in certain circumstances because otherwise the ending would make it skip so it would never actually get to this again other than the first and third time through. That's why these backwards repeats are set to always jump. All right, so again, finale is going through, hitting this bar line, going back to the beginning. Now it gets to this point where the ending starts and finale says, well, this is only the first and third time through. So it's got to skip to the next ending, which is this one, the second time. And again, it hits this. And again, the, um, the, the target for this is always jump nearest forward repeat bar, which in this case is bar one. So it's actually going to go all the way back to bar one. All right, this is the second time through, boom. One, two, three, it, now it hits the third ending. This is the third time through, so it finally says it's okay to play bar four. It hits this, again, always jump to the nearest forward repeat, back to the beginning, going along, going along, and it hits this bar and says, wait, how many times is this through? This is the fourth time through, so we have to skip this ending. And it goes to the fourth time, gets to this ending, and it says, well, this is the fourth ending, so it's fine to play this. So we go along, go along, hit this repeat. It says, always repeat back to the nearest forward ending, or nearest forward repeat bar, boom, back to bar one. Go along, go along, and go along. It gets to this ending, and it says, wait, is this the first or third ending? No, then it skips. It goes to this uh, bar here, and now this ending says, is this the second or fourth time through? Nope, so go to the next ending. So then it goes to bar five, right? So it's sort of taking that fifth time through, it's sort of taking uh, two actions right in a row. Boom, uh, end of bar three, end of bar four, uh, end of bar six, and then it takes the fifth ending and it's on its merry way. And if I set that up right, which I think I did, if I play this back, it should happen. First time through, repeat. Go to the second ending. Third ending, to the fourth ending, back, and now to the fifth ending. All right, and stop. Thank you. Uh, the the, uh, the um, sometimes the um, uh, the screen recorder screws up the the playback and stuff in finale. So, all right, so that's that's kind of how that works. Uh, there's a couple other options I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, just these two options here. Uh, skip ending if ignoring repeats. Now this is actually a, a playback option. Uh, if I go into here, uh, playback record options. There is an option for repeats that says ignore repeats. And if you check this, you can play back your file without hearing any of the repeats, which could be handy if you're just proofreading. You don't want to deal with you know s you know playing something four times or something. Um, so you can check that. But when you do check that, it's better to have uh, skip ending if ignoring repeats checked. Otherwise, it's going to just keep going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, which would sort of, uh, you know, might not make sense. Um, although it makes sense musically here, I suppose, with my little C major scale, but it might not make sense to you because a lot of times the first and second ending will be very similar. You don't want to hear that uh, bar back to back. So with that option checked, uh, skip ending if ignoring repeats, it will go one, two, three, six in this case, uh, if you have it checked here as well in the, uh, the, the, se the second, fourth ending. Right? And then the allow individual edits per staff, um, this I'm going to get into in the next video. This has to do with um, uh, adjusting the brackets if they are showing on multiple staffs. In this case, I only have it showing on the top staff, so it really wouldn't do anything. Um, but that's, uh, that's what that's, that is. Oh, there's one other thing, right? And uh, yeah, the show on options, again, this is actually another video uh, coming up as well. This is going to be where you can actually show the brackets uh, on, on different staffs at the same time. So... Um, so yeah, so that's it. Uh, you know, conceptually, the endings is a little weird. Hopefully, I've sort of uh, you know made that a little bit clearer now. Um, and now that you kind of have an understanding about that, you can kind of create any type of ending situation like this that you need. All right, so I think that's it. Uh, come back the next video. We're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna talk about uh, positioning and and repositioning these. Uh, these brackets, which which does get a little complicated because you saw all of, the, all of those handles, but um, I'll hopefully try and uh, make light of that for you. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, come back soon, and I will see you then.